I see. Uh, one thing I'd like to pick up on is uh, I think a lot of people have the, in their heads at least that um, Quechua, this is this is the Andes, right? This is the high Andes. This is Machu Picchu. This is, you know, this is the Inca Empire, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think there are a lot of kind of misconceptions about uh, Quechua and Quechua and all of these uh, terms and who these people are and where they actually live. So maybe you could uh, give us a quick sketch of that, perhaps. Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with that. I think that uh, I mean clearly the um, the idea that comes to mind, the image that comes to mind of a Quechua speaker is someone who lives uh, in the rural uh, highlands uh, of of Western South America. Um, but uh, the the lives of Quechua speakers have always been more diverse than than just that, and they continue to be today, particularly with things like uh, you know urban migration and inter even international migration. Um, where a place like New York City today, where uh, you can take Quechua classes and, and, and meet Quechua speakers, although there's obviously a lot of shift in that context as well. But uh, another important context in which Andy, uh, in which um, Quechua has been spoken in various places and, and frequently is uh, through Amazonian uh, dispersals or in, in expansions into, into the Amazon. Um, going back to, to the Inca period and probably before, um, and certainly, especially today with the opening of roads into the Amazon and, and Quechua speakers moving in search of work and land. Uh, and also in the context of uh, the current uh, climate crisis where the sort of thin um, kind of um, uh, margin of, of survival in some parts of the very high Andes uh, is greatly complicated by by climate change, and a, a, a good outlet and a good opportunity for someone facing that situation is to move into the Amazon in search of land and, and labor. And so the, uh, the the Quechuan expansion into the Amazon uh, is continues and is a really important part of the 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 multilingual uh, panorama of Western South America. I see. And where where does this all intersect then with the uh, with the coffee industry then? Because you mentioned that it was a coffee farming that kind of occupied a lot of your field time. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Um, you know, it's a funny thing when I, I suppose a lot of people have this experience when they do their um, PhD research, but I went in search of one question about multilingualism and realized that in order to understand it, I had to immerse myself in something else entirely, which was, <laughs> which was coffee. Uh, because the uh, co coffee is what, it, dur during that time, coffee prices were very high and um, the, the coffee, the, the money that could be made and the, the livelihood that could be achieved through coffee farming uh, was, was very good. And so this was drawing people down to these remote parts of the Amazon. And so the, the sort of day-to-day -day context in which people were moving between Spanish and Machiganga and Quechua uh, were very much um, part of, of the expanding coffee industry into this region. And so trying to understand multilingualism and its you know, social and cultural contexts without understanding the expansion of the coffee industry is just impossible because that's what people do all day as they move between these languages, is try to figure out where they stand vis-a-vis -vis the coffee industry to try to wake up every, every morning and, and spend all of their hours um, you know, striving and, and orienting themselves toward this new emerging economy. So it just, uh, I, you know, it wasn't clear to me at the time um, that in order to study multilingualism in this region, you would have to, to know this, but, but truly every, every moment of every day relates to the, the coffee industry in, in some way or another. And so um, the book that I wrote about this is an ethnography of multilingualism, but it's also an ethnography of the coffee industry and its expansion and, um, and the day-to-day -day labor, the day-to-day -day linguistic labor of, um, of a coffee farmer in this part of the Amazonian frontier. So it's sort of, uh, I think of it as both an ethnography of the coffee industry and of multilingualism, because I think that they're basically the same thing in this place. 